good morning dear students today we are going to discuss uh, the block second of the british novel and in that actually we are going to discuss about emily bront emily jen bront was an english novelist and poet she is best remembered for her only novel wuthering heights that is now considered a classic of english literature emily was the third eldest of the four surviving bront siblings had been the youngest any and her brother brain bell she wrote under the pen name alice bell so as we were talking my dear friends actually uh, emily has got a very significant place in english literature and she is very well remembered for her uh, particular novel that is wuthering heights and that is uh, uh, mentioned and uh, that is prescribed in our syllabus also so here after actually in coming slides we would like to discuss about the particular novel that is in our syllabus now we go for the the introduction and the various other phases related to her life she was born on 30th july 1818 in the village of thornton best riding of yorkshire in northern england to maria bernbell and on irish father patrick bront she was the younger sister of charlotte bront and the fifth of six children though the oldest two oldest girls maria and elizabeth died in childhood in 1820 shortly after the birth of emily's younger sister annie the family moved 8 miles away to howarth where patrick was employed as perpetual curate here the children developed their literary talents so actually as we were talking in the slide that their life was not uh, as good actually they uh, they had to migrate from one place to another place and uh, they were not from a very bell to do family so they had to just manage their life emily remains a mysterious figure and a challenge to biographers because information about her is sparse due to her solitary and reclusive nature she does not seem to have made any friends outside her family her sister sarah remains the primary source of information about her although as emily's elder sister writing publicly about her shortly after her death charlotte is not a neutral witness so uh, as we were talking my dear friends emily uh, uh, as a matter of fact she did not write much and she is considered a very mysterious figure uh, in english literature and she was a uh, kind of uh, not an extrovert person she was an introvert and she was uh, actually very much Uh, near to to her sister only her sister charlotte remains the primary source of information about her as we were talking because charlotte uh, knew uh, the most of the facts related to her life and uh, because she uh, emily did not disclose uh, herself uh, to anybody else although as emily's eldest sister uh, writing publicly about her shortly after her death charlotte is not a neutral witness according to lucasta miller uh, in her analysis of bronte biographies charlotte took on the role of emily's first mythographer in the preface to the second edition of puthring heights in 1850 charlotte wrote so this was the introduction of uh, puthring heights there actually charlotte wrote something my sister's disposition was uh, naturally uh, gregarious circumstances favored and fostered her tendency to seclusion so she wrote actually it was not because of her nature it was because of the circumstances and conditions that she became uh, a kind of secluded person except to go to church or to take a walk on the hills she rarely crossed the threshold of home so she never went outside except uh, to go to the church and some household works though her feeling for the people round was benevolent intercourse with them she never sought nor with very few exceptions ever experienced and yet she know them knew their base their language their family history she could hear of them with interest and talk of them with detail minute graphic and accurate but with them she rarely exchanged a word so as we can understand my dear friends through the slides she was very much neutral she was not an extrovert person as charlotte her sister wrote about emily that she was she was confined all the time she was confined to the home 
and she never tried to go outside. As far as Wuthering Heights is considered, uh, 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 is concerned actually, it is considered a very, very famous and outstanding work written by Emily and it is a very premier and very important work by uh, Emily Bront. Emily Bront's Wuthering Heights was first published in London, 1847, appearing as the first two volumes of a three-volume set that included Emily Bront's Agnes Grey. The authors were printed as being Alice and Action Bell. Emily's real name didn't appear until 1850. So as we were talking in the introduction, my dear friends, that she, she used to write novels by her pen name Alice, and so actually that name appeared on the novel. Her original name, uh, Emily, did not appear until 1850. When it was printed on the little, sorry, when it was printed on the title page, of an edited commercial edition, uh, the novel's innovative structure somewhat puzzled critics. Wuthering Heights' violence and passion led the Victorian public and many early reviewers to think that it had been written by men. According to Juliet Gardiner, the vivid sexual passion and power of its language and imagery impressed. So the Juliet, actually, uh, a critic Juliet Gardiner very clearly says the vivid sexual passion and power of its language and imagery impressed, bewildered and appalled reviewers, even though it received mixed reviews when it first came out and was often condemned for its portrayal of a moral passion. The book subsequently became an English literary classic. So, but actually it became very, very famous because of, uh, you see, its subject matter and the portrayal of passions. Although a letter from her publisher indicates that Emily had begun to write a second novel. The manuscript has never been found. So uh, a letter actually uh, indicates very clearly that Emily talked to the publisher about her second novel and actually she wanted to publish another novel but the manuscript of that novel could not be located. Perhaps Emily or a member of her family eventually destroyed the manuscript if it existed when she was prevented by illness from completing it. It has also been suggested that, though less likely, the letter could have been intended for any Bronte who was already writing the Tenet of Wildlife Hall, her second novel. So it, it may be related, the, the letter may also be related to any Bronte who was writing another novel, Tenet of Wildfell Hall. So that was actually Annie's second novel. In any case, no manuscript of a second novel of by Emily has survived. So as we were talking in the introduction, my dear friends, that we, we, have, we have not located, we have not found any, uh, uh, any manuscript of the second novel uh, by uh, Emily. Wuthering Heights is Emily Brown's first and only published novel. As we were talking, uh, this is the only and the first uh, published novel by, by Emily, written between October 1845 and June 1846, and published in 1847 under the pseudonym Alice Bell. Bronte died the following year, aged 30. The decision to publish came after the success of her sister, Sarah's novel, Jane Eyre. So, actually, uh, uh, she she never wanted to publish. Emily never wanted to publish her novel, uh, Budring Heights, but because actually when uh, you see her sister Sarah's novel, Jane Eyre, became uh, very famous, it was a grand success. So then later on she decided to publish her novel also. After Emily's death, Sarah edited the manuscript of Budring Heights and arranged for the edit edited version to be published as a post-Thomas second edition in 1850. Wuthering Heights is the name of the firm house where the story unfolds. The book's uh, care theme, uh, the book's core theme is the destructive effect of jealousy and vengefulness both on the jealous, our vengeful individuals and on their communities. So, after the great success of Charlotte's novel, Jane Eyre, the novel was decided to be published and later on it was edited and the second edited version was published by Charlotte. Wuthering Heights, as we were talking, is a wonderful theme of 
uh, destructive effects of jealousy and vengefulness. Although uh, Buddhism Heights is now widely regarded as a classic of English literature, uh, Buddhism Heights is, is regarded as a, as a classical piece of work in English literature. It received mixed reviews when first published and was considered controversial because its depiction of mental and physical cruelty was unusually stark and it challenged strict Victorian ideals of the day, including religious hypocrisy, morality, social classes, and gender inequality. The English poet and painter D.G. Rossetti referred to it as a fiend of a book, an incredible monster. D.G. Rossetti called it as a fiend of a book, an incredible monster. The action is laid in hell, only it seems places and people have English names there. So he was not very much happy with the novel and its plot and other things, so he, he called it a fiend of a book. In the second half of the 19th century, Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre was considered the best of Bronte's sister's work, but following later re-evaluation, re critics began to argue Wuthering Heights was superior. Later on, people started, critics including critics, started talking about uh, the superiority of Wuthering Heights. The book has inspired adaptations including film, radio and television dramatizations, a musical by Bernard J. Taylor, a ballet opera by Bernard Herrmann, uh, Charlie's Flight, a role play game and a 1978 song by Kate Bush. So later on actually Wuthering Heights became more popular than actually uh, Jan Eyre. Now here we go for the important characters, my dear friends. The characters are Heathcliff. Uh, he was found presumably orphaned on the streets of Liverpool and taken to Buthering Heights by Mr. Ansha, where he is reluctantly cared for by the family. He and Catherine grow close and their love is the central theme of the first volume. His revenge against the man she chooses to marry and its consequences are the central theme of the second volume. Heathcliff has been considered a Byronic hero. Kathy Ernst uh, first introduced to the reader after her death through Logwood's discovery of her diary and carvings. The description of her life is confined almost entirely to the first volume. She seems unsure whether she is or wants to become more like Heathcliff or more like Edgar. It is as if she wants both, even perhaps cannot be fully herself without both. And yet society or human nature makes that impossible. Edgar Linton, introduced as a child in the Linton family, resides at uh, Trust Cross Ranch. Edgar's style and manners are in sharp contrast to Heathcliff, who instantly dislikes him, and Catherine, who is drawn to him. Catherine marries him instead of Heathcliff because of his higher social status with disastrous results. Nelly Dean, the main narrator of the noble, and Nelly is a servant to three generations of the Armsas and two of the Linton family. In a sense, she straddles the culture versus nature divide. Humbly born, she regards herself nevertheless as Hindley's foster sister. They are the same age and her mother is his nurse. She lives and works among the rough inhabitants of Buthering Heights, but is well read and she also experiences the more gentle manners of Trust Cross Grange. Isabella Linton, introduced as part of the Linton family, Isabella is only shown in relation to other characters. She views Heathcliff romantically, despite Catherine warning her against such a view, and becomes an unbitting participant in his plot for revenge against Edgar. Heathcliff marries her, but treats her abusively. Pregnant, she escapes to London and gives birth to a son, Linton. Because she suffers such abuse from her husband and ultimately escapes from it. Henley earns her. Catherine's elder brother, Henley, despises Heathcliff immediately and bullies him throughout their childhood before his father sends him away to college. Henley returns with his wife, Frances, 
After Mr. Ansa dies, he is more mature, but his hatred of Heathcliff remains the same. After Francis' death, Henley is caught in a downward spiral of destructive behavior and ruins the Ansa family by drinking and gambling to excess. Heathcliff beats up Henley at one point when he attempts to kill him with a pistol. Herton Ansa, the son of Henley and Francis, raised at first by Nelly, but soon by Heathcliff. Nelly works to instill a sense of pride in the Ansa heritage, even though Herton will not inherit Ansa property because Henley has mortgaged it to Heathcliff. Heathcliff, in contrast, teaches him vulgarities as a way of avenging himself on Henley. Kathy Linton, the daughter of Catherine Ansa and Edgar Linton, a spirited girl unaware of her parents' history. Edgar is very productive of her, and as a result, she is eager to discover what lies beyond the confines of the Grinch. Linton Heathcliff, the son of Heathcliff and Isabella, a big child, his early years are spent with his mother in the south of England. He learns of his father's identity and existence only after his mother dies when he is 12. Joseph, a servant at Budring Heights who is a rigid, self-righteous Christian but lacks any trace of genuine kindness or humanity. So he's a servant actually who, who does not have any genuine kind of uh, kindness or humanity. He speaks a broad Yorkshire dialect. Lockwood, the first narrator, he rents first cross grants to escape to society, but in the end, the side society is preferable. He narrates the book until chapter 4, when the main narrator Nelly picks up the drill. Francis, Henley's wife and mother of Hareton, Ansha, Jilla, a servant to Heathcliff at Budring Heights during the period following Catherine's death. So he is also a servant actually to Heathcliff. So he is uh, serving to, to Heathcliff. Now here we go for plot, my dear friends, and we would like to understand what uh, is all about the story and what the plot of Wuthering Heights is, how it has become a very important story, how it has become a very important novel in, in the history of English literature, and how, how and why it has got a very significant place in English literature. So all of the questions would like to be discussed now. In 1801, Mr. Lockwood, a wealthy man from the south of England, ran Truss Cross Grange in the north for peace. He visits his landlord, Mr. Heathcliff, who lives in a remote moorland farmhouse, Wuthering Heights, where he finds an old assemblage. Heathcliff seems to be a gentleman, but his manners are Uncouth. The reserved mistress of the house is in her mid teens, and the young man seems to be a family member yet distresses and speaks like a servant. Snowed in Logwood is grudgingly allowed to stay and is shown to a bedchamber where he notices books and graffiti left by a former inhabitant named Catherine. He falls asleep and has a nightmare in which he sees the ghostly Catherine trying to enter through the window. He cries out in fear, rousing Heathcliff who rushes to the room. Lockwood is convinced that what he saw was real. Heathcliff, believing Lockwood to be right, examines the window and opens it, hoping to allow Catherine's spirit to enter. When nothing happens, Heathcliff shows Lockwood to his own bedroom and returns to key watch at the window. At sunrise, Heathcliff escorts Lockwood back to First Cross Grange. Lockwood asks the housekeeper, Nellie Dean, about the family at Wuthering Heights, and she tells him the tale. Thirty years earlier, Wuthering Heights is occupied by Mr. Ernsta, his teenage son Hindley, and his daughter Catherine. On a trip to Liverpool, Ernsta encounters a homeless boy described as dark-skinned gypsy in his aspect. So when Mr. Ansa uh, was going to Liverpool, he, he encountered a person, a homeless boy actually, 
who is described as dark skinned gypsy in aspect. He adopts the boy and names him Heathcliff. Hindley feels that Heathcliff has supplanted him in his father's affections and becomes bitterly jealous. Catherine and Heathcliff become friends and spend hours each day playing on the moors. They grow close. Hindley is sent to college. Three years later, Ansa dies and Hindley becomes the master of Buthering Heights. He returns to life. Sorry, he returns to live there with his new wife, Frances. He allows Heathcliff to stay, but only as a servant. Few months, later, few months after, Hindley returns, Heathcliff had Catherine walk to a press cross grants to spy on the Lintons who are living there. After being discovered, they try to run away, what are, but are caught. Catherine, injured by the Lintons' dog and taken into the house to recapitulate while Heathcliff is sent home. Catherine stays with the Lintons and is influenced by their fine appearances and genteel manners. When she returns to Buthering Heights, her appearance and manners are more ladylike and she laughs at Heathcliff's unkempt appearance. The next day, knowing that the Lintons would visit Heathcliff, tries to dress up in an effort to impress Catherine. But he and Edgar Linton get into an argument and Hindley humiliates Heathcliff by locking him in the attic. Catherine tries to comfort Heathcliff, but he bows a revenge on Hindley. The following year, Francis Ansa gives birth to a son named Hertrin, but dies a few months later. Hindley descends into drunkenness. Two more years pass, and Catherine and Edgar Linton eventually become friends while she becomes more distant from Heathcliff. While Hindley is away, Edgar visits Catherine and they declare themselves lovers soon after. Catherine confesses to Nelly that Edgar has proposed and she has accepted. Although her love for Edgar is not comparable to her love for Heathcliff, whom she cannot marry because of his low social status and lack of education, she hopes to use her position as Edgar's wife to raise Heathcliff's standing. Heathcliff overhears her say it would degrade her to marry him, but not how much she loves him. And in despair, runs away and disappears without a trace. Distraught by Heathcliff's departure, Catherine makes herself ill out of spite. Nelly and Edgar thus begin to pander to her every whim to prevent her from becoming ill again. Three years pass, Edgar and Catherine marry and live together at Thrust Cross Grange. Six months later, Heathcliff returns, now a baldy gentleman. Catherine is delighted. Edgar is not. Edgar's sister Isabella soon falls in love with Heathcliff, who despises her but encourages the infatuation as a means of revenge. One day he embraces Isabella, leading to an argument with Edgar. Upset, Catherine locks herself in her room and begins to make herself ill again through spite and jealousy. Heathcliff takes up residence at Buthering Heights and spends his time gambling with Hindley and teaching Hareton bad habits. Hindley dissipates with health, his health and mortgages the farmhouse to Heathcliff to pay his debts. Heathcliff elopes with Isa Hilla Linton. Two months after the couple returns to Buthering Heights, Heathcliff hears that Catherine is ill and with Nellie's help visits her secretly. However, Catherine is pregnant and the following day she gives birth to a daughter, Kathy, shortly before dying. After Catherine's funeral, Isabella leaves Heathcliff and takes refuge in the south of England. She too is pregnant and gives birth to a son. Linton Henley died six months after Catherine and Heathcliff thus finds himself master at Buthering Heights. After twelve years, Catherine's daughter Kathy grows into a beautiful, high-spirited girl. Edgar learns his sister Isabella is dying, and so he leaves to retrieve her son Linton in order to adopt and educate him. Although Kathy rarely leaves the borders of the Grange, she takes advantage of her father's absence to venture farther afield. She rides over the moors to Buthering Heights 
and discovers she has not one, but two cousins, Hareton in addition to Linton, she also lets it be known that her father has gone south to fetch Linton. When Edgar returns with Linton, a weak and sickly boy, Heathcliff insists that he live at Wuthering Heights. Three years pass, barking on the moors, Nelly and Cathy encounter Heathcliff, who takes them to Wuthering Heights to see Linton and Hareton. Heathcliff hopes Linton and Cathy will marry, so that Linton becomes that heir to Trust Cross Grange. Linton and Cathy begin a secret friendship, echoing the childhood friendship between their respective parents, Heathcliff and Catherine. The following year, Edgar becomes very ill, taking a turn for the worse while Nellie and Cathy are out on the moors, where Heathcliff and Linton trick them into entering Buthring Heights. Heathcliff keeps them captive to enable the marriage of Cathy and Linton to take place. After five days, Nellie is released and later, with Linton's help, Cathy escapes. She returns to the Grange to see her father shortly before, she, before he dies. Now master of Wuthering Heights and Triss Cross Grange and Cathy's father-in-law, Heathcliff insists on her returning to live at Wuthering Heights and remaining there after Linton's death. Soon after she arrives, Linton dies. Hareton tries to be kind to Cathy, but she retreats and then withdraws from the world. At this point, Nellie's tale catches up to the present day. Time passes. And after being ill for a period, Lockwood grows tired of the moors and informs Heathcliff that he will be leaving Guthring Heights. Eight months later, Lockwood returns to the area by chance. Given that his tendency at Tress Cross Grange is still valid, he decides to stay there again. He finds Nelly living at Guthring Heights and inquires what has happened since he left. She explains that she moved to Guthring Heights to replace the housekeeper Jilla who had left. Ayrton had an accident and was confined to the farmhouse during his convulsions. He and Cathy overcame their mutual antipathy and became close while their friendship developed. Heathcliff began to act strangely and had visions of Catherine. He stopped eating and after four days was found dead in Catherine's old room. He was buried next to Catherine. Lockwood learns that Hareton and Cathy plan to marry on New Year's Day. As he readies to leave, he passes the graves of Catherine, Edgar and Heathcliff, and pauses to contemplate the quiet of the moors. So this is how the story goes of uh, you see Budring Heights. A very interesting and uh, story of revenge actually. Hope you must have got the idea. Thank you very much.